Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today at UC Berkeley's Graduate Diversity Admissions Fair. And um, we'll be get, getting started five minutes after the hour to allow everyone to join. Hi, everyone. So for those of you just joining us, we'll be getting started five minutes after the hour um, to allow everyone to join. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, my name is Shelly. Um, I'm Director of Graduate Admissions Recruitment and Enrollment at the Graduate Division. Thanks again for joining us at UC Berkeley's Graduate Diversity Admissions Fair, and this is the Welcome to Cal session. So to get us started, here is the agenda. We'll first hear remarks from Dean Lisa Garcia Bedoya. I'll then give an overview of the admissions fair and introduce our graduate admissions team and then our office for graduate diversity. And then we'll share an overview of resources at UC Berkeley. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Dean Lisa Garcia Bedoya, our vice provost for graduate studies. Thank you so much, Shelley. And good morning, everyone, or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time to learn a little bit more about Berkeley and to think about your graduate journey. I think graduate education is a, is a really important investment in yourself. And so I'm so glad that you're taking the time to find out more and make sure that you're making the right choices. Just to tell you a little bit about me, um, I am the daughter of Cuban refugees. They um, came to the United States with two suitcases of used clothing and had to leave everything behind. And so one of the things they continually told me growing up was the value of education because no one can take what's in your head, even if your material possessions go, go away. And that's a lesson I've taken with me throughout my journey. Uh, but the reality is because my parents were immigrants, I knew nothing about the academy in the United States. And I'm still not entirely certain why I decided that I should get a PhD and become a professor. Um, I'm very glad I did, but I, really want to make certain that you have all the information you need to make sure that you choose the right program um, as you embark on your graduate journey. And I became the graduate dean at Berkeley in order to ensure that our all of our 125 or so graduate programs are open and accessible to all students and that every student we admit to campus can thrive while they're here. And just to explain a little bit about my title, um, I am Vice Provost for Graduate Studies. That means I'm responsible for taking care of all of the almost 13,000 graduate students on campus. And then I'm Dean of the Graduate Division, which means I'm responsible for the operational day-to-day -day 
running of um, the administrative office that manages graduate education on campus. So you've already met Shelly and our wonderful admissions team. Our degrees team is there funding um, a bunch of offices and wonderful people all here to support you um, should you choose to come to Berkeley. And so I want to um, welcome you and, and again, thank you for being here and understand that this fair is really part of, of my vision of wanting to ensure that you make the best choice possible. We do, of course, want you to consider Berkeley, um, but even if you don't, uh, it would make us happy just to make sure that you end up in the right place. And the core value that we um, think is important to make that happen is transparency and making sure that we provide culturally competent support to all of our students. And so this fair is part of that vision in terms of making sure that um, you consider Berkeley as you decide um, where you want to apply, but more importantly, know what is expected in your application, how to apply to graduate school, how to talk about your experiences, how to make sure that you're able to select the right program that really is a good fit for you, and then articulate um, your research interests and um, future goals in such a way that um, is most legible and able to be appreciated by the admissions committee. And so this admissions fair is part of a broader set of supports that we have. So we hope at the end of this week, you will have the opportunity not only to learn more about how to apply to graduate school, but also spend some time with whatever specific programs are of interest to you. We also have what we call an admissions hackathon, which is um, our, a number of our graduate students generally generously agree to sit in a Zoom room to volunteer to help you. And so if you just want someone to read your essay, if you want someone to talk through which program you want to apply to, any questions that you have about the process. Again, not assuming anyone knows anything, but just wanting to make sure that you can feel confident and comfortable with pressing that button and applying to whatever program you decide. We also have um, over a dozen webinars that we run in the spring for admitted students which talk about all different kinds of, uh, all different aspects of graduate education at Berkeley. Again, to make sure that you have the information you need to make an informed choice and make the best choice for you. And then lastly, um, Shelly and her team and others on campus are here to support you as you go through this process and try to imagine yourself here or somewhere else, but making sure that you have what you need in order to make sure that this is as positive a process as possible. Again, we understand that applying to graduate school can be intimidating, particularly for someone like me who's doing it with no information. Um, and so we want to make sure you have that information, that you feel comfortable with the process, and that you really feel like you're coming home when you choose your program. Again, we hope you'll choose Berkeley, but regardless, we hope you land in the best place for you and that you the application process is as painless and um, as supportive as possible. So. We hope you enjoy your time. Again, thank you for investing your time today with us and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. Go Bears. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks again for taking the time today to speak to prospective students and for your warm welcome. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go over the overview of the fair. Um, we are thrilled, like Lisa mentioned, that you are interested in pursuing graduate education at UC Berkeley. We know that Berkeley has many graduate programs and that the application process can be daunting. So this fair was really designed specifically for you to help you learn more about our top ranked graduate programs, gain a deeper understanding of our culture and resources available, and to demystify the application process. And so we hope that, that by the end of the fair, you're able to find the best fit as you pursue your academic and professional goals. This fair has over 60 sessions in one hour information sessions and discussion groups. In the program sessions, you'll see faculty, staff, or students sharing more information about the degree, the curriculum, research, career outcomes, and you'll likely have an opportunity to ask your own questions as you determine which program is the best fit for you. In our plenary sessions, uh, you'll hear directly from current students who have had similar experiences as you when they were exploring graduate programs. And we highly recommend that you use this time to engage with presenters and ask all of your burning questions. As you likely saw from your reminder emails, please use your unique schedule link to see the sessions you've signed up for 
including the Zoom links to access them. You can also add sessions to your calendar through this link. And if you experience any technical difficulties, please reach out to gradadm at berkeley.edu and we will do our best to assist you. All right, and I am, I have the pleasure to introduce our admissions team. As I mentioned, my name is Shelly and I'm the Director of Graduate Admissions, Recruitment and Enrollment. It is such a pleasure to be here today to welcome you all and introduce our team, Carissa, Rochelle and Nancy. Our team is here to answer any questions that you might have about the application and admissions process. Um, we also encourage you to visit our webpage at grad.berkeley.edu slash admissions for steps to apply, admissions requirements, fee waiver opportunities, and frequently asked questions. If you don't find what you're looking for, please continue to engage with us by emailing our email address here, and we'll connect you with the resources that you're seeking. And with that, I'll pass it to Martha Chavez, our Assistant Dean for Graduate Diversity. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, so welcome everyone. Um, as Shelly mentioned, my name is Martha Chavez and I serve as Assistant Dean for Graduate Diversity. Uh, my role is to lead campus-wide graduate diversity initiatives and programs, including directing the Office for Graduate Diversity. And as you can see from this slide, our office um, supports both prospective and current graduate students. And we specifically focus on serving students who have been historically underrepresented in graduate education. And that includes undocumented and first-generation college students, and also students who have experienced financial and educational challenges. For prospective students, uh, we provide support and resources during the admissions and recruitment process, like this wonderful graduate diversity fair. Um, and if you are admitted and become a graduate student here at UC Berkeley, we will provide you with some really important and critical resources. First and foremost, we provide academic and financial guidance to help you thrive. We also will connect you to key campus resources, and there are so many amazing resources on the Berkeley campus that will help to enhance your educational experience and help you to navigate um, our, our large university. We also will offer professional development resources and networking to help prepare you for future careers and also to provide peer-to-peer -peer mentoring because we believe that having a network and a support system is crucial to help you build community. And finally, we also will provide a forum for you to share ideas uh, about our programs and initiatives that will help to enhance our educational experience for all graduate students. And so we wanna hear from you. So if you become a graduate student, we will be engaging you in conversations about what's working well, what are areas uh, that we can improve upon. So we look forward to giving you a voice and an opportunity to really enhance and have you have a great educational experience as a UC Berkeley graduate student. So on that note, uh, I just want to also share my excitement to have you join us today and hopefully throughout the week. And now I will turn it over to Sarah, who will briefly share more about our office and our programs. Thanks, Martha. Welcome everyone again, excited to have you all here. Um, so this is a layout of our current team within the Office for Graduate Diversity. Um, Marta Chavez is, of course, our Assistant Dean for Graduate Diversity and Director of our office. I'm Sarah Acosta. I prefer they pronouns, but you can use she and I won't be offended. Um, I'm the Assistant Director for the Office for Graduate Diversity and particularly responsible for our pipeline initiatives. Patrick is our Director of the American Indian Graduate Program. Jessica is a program administrator for graduate student success, um, undocumented graduate student success. Sean, who's here with us and who you'll hear from later on, um, is our inaugural graduate pipeline coordinator. So that's really exciting for us as we grow our work. And Mariela is our inclusive excellence hub coordinator. And you'll hear a little bit more concrete items about what it is that our team does and why we have these titles. Before we dive into the nitty gritty of what our work looks like, um, I did want to give a plug. If you are somebody who identifies as being undocumented, 
um, or Indigenous, there are two plenary sessions coming up where you will be able to hear from our team, um, Jessica and Stephen, who is a current graduate student with us, will be having a, a session on the 1st at 1 p.m. on demystifying the graduate application process for undocumented students. And Patrick, along with his student leader, um, Jesus Nazario, will be having a session on Native at Cal um, on Tuesday, so tomorrow. So that's a lot of words. That's a lot of like high level, we do, this is our mission. But what does that actually look like? Um, some of you who are here may have seen us through some of our other admission, uh, our other um, admissions and recruitment efforts, right? So you may have seen us at a different event. We may have done a presentation at your campus, things like that. We do provide application support programming that Lisa alluded to earlier. Um, we have a summer research program that you'll hear a little bit more about later. And then of course, we're, support, we're working with our admissions team to make sure that this week happens. And in the spring, after you've hopefully been accepted to UC Berkeley, um, we also offer similar webinars so that you can understand a little bit more about what does it actually mean to be a student here at Berkeley? Because again, we want you to be making the most informed decisions possible, even if it's not going to end up being Berkeley that you choose. So big things, some of you may not be ready to yet submit an application. Our goal is still to make sure that you are prepared for when you are ready to do that. Two of the opportunities that we have for prospective students include our Pipeline to Graduate School Bootcamp, which is completely free. It's all um, online. And then if you need to participate asynchronously, that's also possible. Right now, the signup is not open yet, but keep an eye out on your email um, to make sure that you get word about that. The other option we have is our Inclusive Excellence Summer Research Experience. This is something that's open to current undergraduate students. So you must be a student um, who has about one more year um, left in their academic journey. Um, I was ambitious when I made this slide. The application isn't open yet, but there are information sessions that um, you are able to sign up for already. So please take a look at our website if you think you might be interested in participating in a summer research opportunity at Berkeley um, and come to one of those info sessions. Now, like Martha said earlier, our work does not only revolve around prospective students. Our team is also very dedicated to the retention and success of the students who do end up coming to Berkeley. So what does that look like? Some these, I'm gonna highlight some key initiatives that you'll wanna pay attention to, particularly if you are gonna be um, becoming a first year student here. So the first one is the Path to the Professoriate program. This program engages, I think we might actually be a little past 100 at this point because we've expanded now that it's P2P and P2P STEM. Um, but basically it's to create a community for our current um, doctoral students who are in their first year to sort of create their plan. What do, what do you need to do while you're a graduate student in order to then be competitive in the market once you're thinking about becoming a professor? Um, you do receive a stipend for completing some of your, um, like your, your plans, right? You have to have a concrete plan, your deliverable at the end of the semester. Um, but most importantly is definitely building that community piece of folks across the different departments. A big draw that I see from when I look at our departmental email um, is our diversity and community fellows program. So we have this year, I believe 32 students, maybe 34, somewhere there it has grown. Um, who are working with our office to improve campus climate and culture um, across, across, again, across the campus, wanting to really emphasize our interdisciplinary approach, wanting to create a united graduate community um, and address challenges across all of those. Um, fellows are, Fellows are paid um, about $7,500 for completing their fellowship with our office. Um, but most importantly, they're also available to you all to be able to meet and talk through 
what are the, the questions you have? What's the experience like? So if you're not able to attend our hackathon, our diversity and community fellows are still available to you. If you're in the STEM field, we recognize diversity beyond like it, what is diverse varies depending on your environment, right? So in the STEM fields, oftentimes what's diverse is different from when we look at things more broadly. So STEM FYI is a program that is student run, um, but sponsored by the PPG Foundation. They've been adamant supporters um, to ensure that our STEM students who are underrepresented can create community, not just across their different departments, but also across cohorts. So making sure that we're utilizing <clears throat> the wisdom of our more senior graduate students to help that first year of being a graduate student to sort of be a little more seamless. An exciting thing that just came by um, this past year or so, <clears throat> We've been working towards it for two years, but it's becoming a reality this year um, is our Inclusive Excellence Hub. And you saw you were introduced to Mariela on that slide earlier. The Inclusive Excellence Hub is a really unique space on campus because it's a space that's dedicated to the community of graduate students who are underrepresented. It's very unique, not just at UC Berkeley, but across graduate education at large, I would say. Um, we have community events there. There's spaces for you to just exist that maybe aren't your department. Um, hosting dissertation writing workshops in collaboration with other departments and other um, units on campus. Um, and we have a basic needs center partnership as well. So the aim of making sure that you're able to access your basic needs such as food um, in multiple places on campus. You saw a little bit earlier the American Indian Graduate Program, which is part of our office as well. Um, Patrick creates events, different programming and collaboration with students, um, really intending to boast the mentorship of um, Indigenous members of the community, particularly our graduate students. There's community building events. Um, he also participates in recruitment, so you may have seen him on the road as well, um, and really just making sure that holding the university accountable as well to our indigenous populations um, at UC Berkeley and in the community is another big part of his role. We're going to talk a little more about some spaces on campus. So Patrick is housed within the Inclusive Excellence Hub, but if you're a Native student looking for information or another space for community, um, Anthony Hall just opened up last year for as the Native American Community Center. So that's really exciting to see more physical spaces for our students. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about UndocU grads. Um, Jessica is the lead for everything undocumented graduate student related. Um, our team is prepared to support you. And at the same time, we also always wanna make sure that Jessica is sort of leading our, our initiatives and support. You wanna make sure you're linked with her. Um, <clears throat> she hosts monthly support uh, circles and community workshops. Um, these are in collaboration with mental health professionals, so that's really important to note. Um, another big initiative that she works on is ensuring professional development opportunities, particularly for those who do not have DACA. Um, and so in general, just a really wonderful resource to have. Um, and she is also housed within the Inclusive Excellence Hub but there is another space on campus uh, with the Undocumented Community Resource Center. This is just a preview of the website. Um, she has a lot of really wonderful, she's worked really hard on the website. And so there's a lot of resources there um, to take a look at if you need. All right. So hello, everyone. Again, my name is Sean David Correa Martel. I go by they, them pronouns. And I am the inaugural graduate pipeline coordinator at the Office for Graduate Diversity. Uh, so we say inaugural, meaning this is a new role. So essentially what I'm tasked with is working with undergraduate programs and colleges and supporting and pipelining students into graduate school. Um, so that's just the general gist of my role, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. 
Um, but for today, I'm going to be going over our campus sensors and programs. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with our UC Berkeley Basic Needs Center. So the UC Berkeley Basic Needs Center offers a wide variety of support uh, for ensuring students' basic needs are met. And so the way that basic needs are defined here uh, is nutritious food or food pantries, stable housing, so they provide support um, with temporary emergency housing, hygiene, transportation, healthcare, which means grants for students with financial need for co-pays and health costs, mental wellness, financial stability, sleep, and emergency dependent services. So the UC Berkeley Basic Needs Center is a center on campus that if you would need support with those um, different things that I mentioned, you would go ahead and go to that center. The next center that I would like for us to review is the Graduate Wellness Center, which is a hub on campus for graduate students specialists in counseling and psychological services, as well as for our disabled students program. So here they provide services and programming specific to and for the graduate community. The next center that I would like to highlight for us is the Gender Equity Resource Center or the Gen X Center as we like to call it. And the Gen X Center is a space for the campus community, students, staff, alumni, and faculty to receive support, education, and community around all things gender and sexuality. Their main services focus on women, LGBTQIA plus communities, sexual violence and sexual harassment prevention, and survivor care, as well as men. For the next set of resources that I would like for us to review is going to be our student development offices. So there's a hub on our campus called the Centers for Educational Justice and Community Engagement. So within this hub, there are offices to support the holistic, equitable, and positive campus experience for our students. These include the African American Student Development Office, Asian Pacific American Student Development Office, Chicane Latine Student Development Office, and Native American Student Development Office. Also within this cluster is the Multicultural Community Center, which is a student one and student led space on campus with resources for students and community members. And then the last, but certainly not least center that I would like to highlight is the Fannie Lou Hamer Black Resource Center, which in 2017, as a direct result of student advocacy, the Fannie Lou Hamer Black Resource Center was opened and now serves as a space on campus for Black students, student groups, organizations to come together to collaborate, study, and be in community. Most recently, we've seen the exciting opening of the Native Community Center and Disability Cultural Community Center on campus. And again, these are just small samples of the resources Berkeley has to offer its graduate students, in addition to the ones found at many other institutions, such as writing centers, career centers, and more. All right, thank you, Sean. Um, so we, this is the end of our formal presentation. So we're going to open it up to your questions. You can use the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen to ask a question. We turned off the chat right now so that we can just engage with you in that way. We're trying to multitask, so please. <laughs> uh, thank you for your patience. All right, I think we'll start maybe from the top, Sarah and Sean, and we can start working through the questions live. Um, we have a question here. I wanna know if online program students are allowed to live and work on campus. I believe the answer is yes. You are still a UC Berkeley student and you um, do have access to campus resources. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add there. Sarah? No, okay. All right. Uh, we had quite a few questions about the electrical engineering and computer science PhD session that was canceled right after this at 10 a.m. We are so sorry to cancel that due to unforeseen circumstances. 
as of now, we don't have an alternative time for it, but you can reach out to the EECS department and check out their website and they should be able to answer any questions that you might have there. Um, another common question that we are getting is, um, is this session going to be recorded? Yes, I'm currently recording the session um, after the event after the entire event, so after Friday, we'll be posting a YouTube um, playlist of the plenary sessions. Just note that not all of the departments will be recording their sessions, so there may be some um, gaps there. If your department of interest is not recording their session, feel free to just reach out to them to ask any questions um, that you might have. And then lastly, another question that we are getting is fee waivers for, for the application. So each year we are able to only accommodate a limited number of application fee waivers. And to be eligible for a fee waiver, you must be a US citizen or current permanent resident who demonstrates financial need or participated in certain programs. So if none of these apply to you, and if you haven't already, please reach out to your department of interest to ask if there might be any options to assist you. All right. And Sarah, Sean, feel free to jump in if there are any questions that you'd like to answer too. Um, I see a number of questions that are sort of asking about eligibility to participate in certain programs. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the, you all are like asking about a specific program. If you can be as specific as possible, that would be wonderful. But I do want to just clarify within our office, um, you don't have to be a PhD applicant or um, there are some times where we limit it to you have to be within the US and a lot of that mostly has to do with like time differences or Zoom application limitations, um, things like that. But you don't have to be a PhD applicant in order to engage with our office um, and our services, including the bootcamp. It's gonna be most beneficial if you are looking towards a PhD because that's sort of what it was tailored around. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure um, that that was clear that we don't only support PhD applicants. Uh, we have a question here on asking for help for finding an advisor who can help during the application process. Um, in general, we really recommend that you reach out to your department of interest. So if you're applying for the ethnic studies program, reach out to the ethnic studies graduate advisor um, for questions that you have around the application. Separately, and just a plug, I am hosting and applying to graduate programs and funding your education webinar tomorrow from 12 to 1 p.m. And you're welcome to join us there as well. And of course, they just started drilling outside of my window. So I hope you cannot hear that. Okay, Sarah says no, so I'm good. Um, I was also going to do a plug for tomorrow's session as well. There's a question here around like funding. Um, there is going to be some information about how funding works at UC Berkeley um, in tomorrow's applying session. So please make sure you do attend if you have more specific questions about funding. Um, we have a question here. Is it okay to apply to more than one department or program? So unfortunately, it is UC Berkeley policy that you can only apply to one program per admission cycle. So if you're juggling between two departments, um, I would really recommend that you go to their departmental sessions if they're offering it during the spare and figure out which one is the best fit for you. And we have a question on how do we contact the Department of Interest? Let me see if I can pull up that. We do have a whole web page on the programs that we offer. Um, 
And I will pop that into, I'll pop that into the chat right now. Graduate programs. And in this list, you'll be able to see the application deadline, what term they admit for, and then what type of graduate program it is. If you do click on the program name, on the left side, you'll see contact information for all the grad advisors. Sorry, the questions are coming in faster than I can read. Can I, can I contact more than one potential PhD advisor? I'm assuming you mean, the, will you clarify what you mean by PhD advisor? Is that the staff or the faculty member? And um, we have a question here. If we're not accepted to our first choice program, can we transfer our application to another department? Unfortunately, no. Um, that violates the policy of only applying to one graduate program. There's a question in here about um, affirmative action. And just want to clarify that within California, we've not had affirmative action since 1996 um, with Proposition 209. So anonymous attendee, there's been no impact within California schools. Thanks for asking. Um, I think, hello everyone. I would like to address the contacting professors that we wish to work with before or after the application. Um, and I think my safe answer is there is no harm, no foul, but don't expect an answer from the professors. Sometimes some professors would prefer not to reply to prospective PhD students for the sake of ensuring that they're reviewing all the candidates holistically. Uh, so if you don't get a response, don't take it personal. Uh, it's just perhaps the professor might not want to uh, give that student a, a extra leg in the room, um, so to speak. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to, to send an email and if they res respond, then you know better, but don't be insistent on trying to get a response from them in that regard. Thanks, Sean. And then my other tip for that is feel free to look at the faculty member's website. Sometimes they have tips for prospective students in lieu of responding to emails. So that might be something you want to explore too. Um, we have a question on, is the application reviewed on a rolling basis before the deadline? So this depends on the program. So I would reach out to your program of interest to ask if they are on a rolling basis, uh, meaning that once you submit your application, they will review your application within a set number of weeks or months. Um, I want to say that most PhD programs at Berkeley are not on a rolling basis. So all applications are typically reviewed after the application deadline. Um, but again, reach out to your department to confirm that information. Sarah, there's a question. Is the inclusive excellence summer research experience only for PhD prospective students? Part of the application will ask for your interest in a PhD program. That's largely because to apply to a PhD program, you should have research within your background, which isn't necessarily the case within a master's program. Um, 
Me again, I would like to address the um, question of can we, or is it possible to amend my application what in, once it has been submitted, you would like to add to it? So I would definitely recommend you reaching out to your department that you're applying to, because uh, some departments might allow it, but for the most part, they're a little bit strict that once you submit, changes to applications may not necessarily be possible, but reaching out is always uh, your best bet for that. Um, there's a question here. Can you describe who is part of the admissions committee for PhD programs? So typically it's going to be faculty, staff, and perhaps a graduate student if um, if the department allows that. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. There's someone asking if there's joint degree options. There are joint degree options in different departments. So just depending on which department you're interested in, it'd be better um, or be easier for us to support if you specify which department. But there is joint degree options. There's a question too that I'd like to address on GRE. So is GRE mandatory or optional? Again, that depends on department. I know a lot of departments have been moving towards the optional end for the GRE test reporting, but again, please make sure you double check what your department is asking for those requirements specifically. That information is also available on the link that Shelly provided earlier in the chat on graduate programs. Um, there's a question here about the MasterCard Foundation. MasterCard is hosting their own session, I believe, tomorrow at 9 a.m. So feel free to add that session to your schedule if you want to learn more um, about the program there. Shelly, there was a question about um, recordings that I'm going to answer, and you can just correct me if I'm wrong, if that's okay. Um, okay. The question was if you can access the recording even if you weren't able to attend the session. Um, my understanding is that if a session is being recorded, that it will be available to anyone who registered for the fair. Is that right? So the plenary sessions, yes, will be available on our grad.berkeley.edu website, so it'll be public. The departmental sessions, it's really up to the department to record. If they do send us their recording, we will add that to our website. And you will receive a follow-up email after the fair um, with all of these resources. Um. Shelly or Sarah, do we have any sessions for the Masters of Science? I'm not sure what if there's like specific programs, but folks are like I see repeated questions about anything for MS. We do have master's programs and we recommend looking it up by the department names. Um, so that and most of the department sessions will cover all of the um, programs that they offer. So I hope that helps. Um, we have a question about the GRE. Does the GRE score show up as verified within the application once they have been officially sent over? So yes, they will be verified once we receive the official score report from ETS.
There was a question about additional resources and spaces on campus for um, different affinity groups. We only listed a very small select group that are unique to within like graduate education and then of course within Berkeley. Um, a big, big, big component we totally left out is also our graduate student organizations. There are a number of graduate student organizations and if you're like, the thing I want doesn't exist, there's also a route for our students to be able to create the thing they need. So in the chat, I'm putting the link where you can browse the student organizations. Um, right now I did filter it so that it would be specific to graduate student organizations, but you can also play around with those filters on the left-hand side if you wanted to see any other information too or narrow it down further. Thanks, Sarah. Um, there's a question here on, is there an international student office that offers assistance on visa issues, accommodations, and cultural adaptation? Um, I would recommend reaching out to our Berkeley International Office, BIO, and they should be able to provide assistance. And I will put the URL in that. I put it in the chat. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's hard to multitask. I know. I got you. Um, I did see a few questions about Path to the Professoriate. Um, it is not part of the application for admission. It's something that you would have to apply to after you've been admitted, after you've selected Berkeley. We figured let's narrow down the amount of the amount of applications you have to submit until after you cho do choose Berkeley. Um, we have a question if there are any technical difficulties that you are experiencing during the fair, who do you contact? So that's gradadm at berkeley.edu. And I will put that in that question as well. And sorry that you're having technical difficulties. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that the fair session schedule is very sensitive to how you input your first name, last name, and your email when you register for sessions. So it has to match exactly. There cannot be one letter that is wrong or a space that is included. So if you're not seeing something on your schedule, try registering again and making sure that you are paying attention to those fields. Um, I'm seeing some questions on the timeline for PhD programs and admissions. I will definitely be reviewing that in the Applying to Grad programs and funding your education webinar tomorrow from 12 to 1. So feel free to join us there. The session will be recorded, so we will share that recording after the fair. And in that session, I will also be going through do's or don'ts in your application and providing some tips. Um, question here about MBA Master of Engineering program. So we do have some concurrent degree programs, meaning that you will receive um, both degrees upon graduation. So if it's an MBA and Master of Engineering, you'll receive both the degrees. You can find more information on the grad programs page that we had um, shared before and then reach out to the department um, if you have any specific questions. Question about fee waivers that you've applied for an application fee waiver. When should you expect to hear back? You should expect to hear back probably within three to five business days. Um, upon submitting your fee waiver form.
There's a question here about how applications are reviewed. So the program has an admissions committee, which consists of faculty, staff, and maybe a student. Um, all applications are reviewed holistically, as Sean mentioned, meaning that every part of your application will be reviewed. If one part of your application is maybe weaker than the others, you can um, balance it out with strengths in other parts of your application. Um, another question here on what are the application requirements? So we do have some basic minimum application requirements that we require. And then anything that is department specific, you'll need to confirm with the uh, with your department of interest. So I will actually pop that into the question and you can take a look for yourself too. Um, I see a specific question about uh, the path to professoriate initiative, Sarah. Are folks able to apply to this program uh, during the application or is it after they are admitted into Berkeley? Yeah, there were a number of those questions. So um, again, just to reiterate, the application for path to the professoriate is something that happens after you've not only been admitted, but also after you've actually selected Berkeley as your institution for graduate study. There are lots, sorry, I see you on mute, Shelly. Give me one second. There are lots and lots of questions around funding that are still coming in. Um, here's the general, I'm putting in the chat, the general webpage around funding at Berkeley. But again, I wanna reemphasize tomorrow's session on applying will give you a little bit more um, concrete information about what it is to, what funding looks like at Berkeley. And also, I just want to reiterate to you, you kind of hear us constantly saying you're going to want to check with your department, you're going to want to check with your department. Um, there are differences depending on not just the department, but what type of degree that you are seeking. So your best bet for the most accurate information will always be to contact your department of interest. We have a question on is it too late to what is it too late <laughs> to start preparing my application? And the answer is no, it's never too late to start preparing your application. Um, again, I would recommend looking at the grad program's URL that we shared to see what the application deadlines are. Um, most of the PhD application deadlines are going to be in December. And most of the master's application deadlines are in January, typically. So if you are still interested in pursuing a PhD this year, get started now. Start going to the Department of Interest um, website, their session, if they're hosting one, and seeing if you are the right fit for them and if they're the right fit for you, most importantly. All right, so we are nearing the top of the hour. We still have a lot of questions and I'm sorry that we're not going to be able to get through all of the questions here today. However, we have a ton of sessions lined up for you for the Grad Admissions Fair. And we are so excited to continue to engage with you um, as you decide if UC Berkeley is um, a right fit for you for graduate education. So I'm gonna pass it to Sarah to share details on how to contact us.
Yes, there are always, always more questions than we can get to. And I'm so sorry. Um, I think another thing that we will probably be working on on our end is curating a list of FAQs to make sure that some of the information can be provided up front. A lot of the questions you all have are answered on the web page. So we're happy to help you in terms of narrowing down where it is you should be looking. You can get a hold of the Office for Graduate Diversity either at our email, grad.diversity at berkeley.edu. Um, we are active on social media, less so on Facebook, I'm not gonna lie, um, but X, formerly known as Twitter, RIP, um, we are there and we are also on Instagram. Our Instagram typically features a lot more of our current student information. And so I would really recommend checking that out too. Um, because you also want to see what life is like for current graduate students. Um, you can come to our webpage. Um, and I would also, this is not like a well, I think most people overlook this, but a big tip that I have for you all is looking at what institutions are providing to their current students. So don't just look at the webpage that's for prospective students. Also take a look at what is being offered to current graduate students. So you can have, again, that understanding of what would it be like once I'm there? Um, also another plug, again, our diversity and community fellows are happy to meet with you um, and they have their office hours, UCBDCF, I think. Yes. Um, so please do schedule an appointment with them. They're wonderful people. And if they're ever out of scope for anything, they'll refer you to one of us. So yeah, thank you. A huge thank you to everyone who presented and all of you attendees and prospective students interested at, in graduate education at UC Berkeley. We hope you enjoy the rest of the fair. Um, again, if you have technical difficulties, feel free to reach out to us and we hope you have a great rest of your week. All right, thanks everyone, take care.